Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this lecture series. We are so delighted to have you with us from all parts of the world. Behind me, just to set the scene, is a tapestry which has recently been woven at the workshop commissioned by the City of Melbourne, designed by Mandy Nicholson, and is now at the Melbourne Town Hall. Welcome to the ATW's third lecture as part of our international speaker series coinciding with the Kate Durham Award and the Irene Davies Emerging Artist Award for Small Tapestries. My name is Caroline Johnston and I'm the convener of the Friends of the Australian Tapestry Workshop. Before we begin today, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the Boon Wurrung and Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation who are the traditional custodians on the land from which I'm zooming in today. I would also like to pay respect to their elders, both past and present, and extend that respect to other Indigenous Australians present. Celebrating 10 years since the Kate Derham Award was established, the Tapestry Weavers selected for this speaker series have been winners or finalists of either the Kate Derham Award or Irene Davies Emerging Artist Award for Small Tapestries. These awards celebrate creativity and excellence in contemporary tapestry. The awards are open now for nominations until the 9th of August. Today, we welcome Mariana Ortega, who is a tapestry weaver from Mexico. Mariana was a finalist in the Irene Davies Award in 2017 and 2015. We're so thrilled to have you here. Mariana received her Bachelor of Degree in Art from the University of Pueblo in Mexico. And if I don't get these pronunciations right, I'm sure Mariana can help me later. She's also studied at the Art Center in St. Louis Potosí. <laughs> <laughs> the School of Painting Techniques, Vincent van Gogh in Mexico City and at the Allende's Institute in San Miguel de Allende, where she was introduced to tapestry weaving. In 2016, she was an artist in residence at the Australian National University in Canberra, Australia, and studied tapestry under Valerie Kirk. In addition, Mariana has ex exhibited in numerous group and solo exhibitions around Mexico, as well as in Australia and the USA. Currently, she teaches tapestry at her studio, Morog. Mexican Textiles Workshop, located in St. Louis, Potosí, Mexico. Now, if you would like to ask a question during the talk, please send them through by clicking the Q&A button. We'll try and answer as many questions as possible at the end of the lecture. Uh, I, I now know you join me in welcoming Mariana Ortega to speak. Mariana, thank you for joining us today and welcome to our international speaker series. Um, over to you, you can now start speaking. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Colorine. Your pronunciation was very well. Uh, so, uh, my name is Mariana Ortega. I'm a tapestry weaver and I'm from San Luis Potosí, Mexico. Uh, okay, let me share this. Okay, so I want to begin talking about when I start weaving. And I started weaving nine years ago. Uh, my first approach uh, to this technique was when I went to live to San Miguel de Allende, which is a very beautiful city uh, close to mine. It's like two hours away from San Luis Potosí. So I went to San Miguel de Allende to study the art degree. And the first year, one of the subjects was tapestry weaving, which at first I I think it was very basic. I only learned uh, three different techniques, which are the plain weave, uh, the rear knot, and the sumac weave. So it was very basic. I didn't understand at first how it worked and what can I do with it. So I didn't like it that much, but then um, I, I, I mean, the only references I have at that time were this traditional weaving we have in Mexico, which is beautiful, but that wasn't what I was looking for. So this is a picture of me, uh, like the first picture I have of me weaving nine years ago. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, I have always been very interested in uh, imagery of the female body. I'm always trying to represent the female body at first, maybe in an abstract way, uh, because I don't know, this is like the best way I have to express myself through these representations. I must admit that at first when I entered the art world, I was trying to be a sculptor 
So most of the courses I have taken are about it. So you can see a picture of me here on a workshop about a sculpture. So yeah, anyway, uh, since I've been, um, since I began weaving, I've been creating characters to tell stories sometimes. And I think most of the times they are just hidden stories, like love stories and sometimes bad and sad stories. But, but yeah, um, what most interests me about about the female body, uh, the lines, the curves, uh, the natural way, the breast hang, and yeah, just the, the, the positions the body can adopt when, when you force it. i am always been very inspired by Egon Shell. I hope my pronunciation is well, but yeah, Egon Shell. And yeah, I think sometimes uh, the way I, I draw these female bodies are very inspiring in his work. So I must admit that most of the portraits I have done are self-portraits. For me, it's just easier to draw myself. I know what angle I want, and sometimes I have a very specific idea of what I want to do. And it's just easy for me, for me to, to adopt the, the position I'm looking for, I'm the, the one that I'm imagining. So, um, so yeah, most of the portraits, it's me. Some of them are not. But anyway, uh, I believe this process has helped me to accept myself. Sometimes, and I, yeah, I'm gonna speak for myself, but I believe sometimes we have these issues with our bodies and how the perfect body should be. And we don't care about being healthy. We just care about looking good. So drawing myself and, and weaving myself has helped me to accept myself and to see my imperfections in a different way. So it's, it, I mean, yeah, I, I want to share this with you. Um, it's quite personal, but I'm gonna share it. Sometimes when I'm at the exhibition, some people doesn't know I'm the tapestry weaver exhibiting his work. Um, sometimes they are just looking at the piece of art and just saying, talking between each other, like, oh yeah, it's beautiful, it's amazing, blah, blah, blah. And I think to myself, like, yeah, you are a piece of art, just like we all are. So weaving myself and drawing myself has helped me to go through a lot of things, to accept myself, to know that I'm worth it, and, and to know that I don't have to pretend to be someone else just to fit in. So it makes me believe in myself. So for me, weaving is everything, is where I belong and is where I want to be. So this is how this journey begins. So the first, oh, I'm sorry. I just went very excited about talking, but these are the sketches I usually do, like the self-portraits. So you can see this, uh, these sketches are very colorful than the ones before. So yeah, I want to talk about this first portrait I did. It was the first portrait I did eight years ago. Um, I was very inspired by Egon Schell's work. I believe I met his work eight years ago because the background, I'm going to talk about the backgrounds later, but the background was inspired in one of his works because I always have trouble uh, designing the backgrounds of the these characters and everything. So, so yeah, uh, in this tapestry, I used a plain weave and the warp was five ends per inch. It was very separated between one another. Uh, so yeah, it was the first one. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know you can do this kind of things with tapestry. My knowledge was so poor. So I was just experimenting and trying to find my own style and to create my own art and my characters and everything. So 
so yeah, this was the first tapestry. I really like it. And it feels very honest for me because I wasn't trying to impress anyone and I wasn't trying to say anything. I was just trying to, to do what I wanted to do with tapestry. So I want to talk now about the process of the tapestries I do. So as you can see, I have my sketch. And then after this sketch, I, uh, um, I do like, I expand this sketch into the measurements I want for the tapestry. I used to do it by hand. Now I don't do it by hand anymore, but I used to do it by hand. So I have now this uh, second sketch, like the big one. And then I divide this sketch in sections. So I have, uh, you can see letters um, in the drawing. So I have these letters that let me know where it's gonna be light where it's going to be shadow, where it's going to be medium light, medium shadow. And then I place this, uh, this sketch in behind the warp and then I just follow it while I'm weaving. So after this, I select the colors I want to use. In, and it's the same, uh, which colors are gonna be for light and which colors are gonna, are gonna be for, for shadow and medium shadow. So. It's just the same. And then I place the, the sketch behind the warp and I just go back and take a look at it just to see it's in the right place and everything is just correct. And then I'm ready for the magic to begin. So, well, when, when I first started doing this, I didn't know this was like the goblin technique, uh, which it, it's um it's the same process like you have your sketch on the back and then you paint on your warp just to follow the lights and that, the lines and everything but at that time i didn't know i was doing this this thing in a correct way i mean i was just experimenting and just trying to to go along so yeah i mean mm, I, I was I didn't knew that much at first. Um, so yeah, this uh, after this first portrait I did eight years ago, I began working on a series, a big one, a really big one. And it's um, it's the same. It's, it's portraits and female bodies, and it's very colorful. And I use the Rianot which is for me it's been uh, a very slow technique you need a lot of time you need a lot of patience you need a lot of material so i began doing this series this was the first one it was eight years ago as well so you can see here i am weaving the tapestry and you can see the sketch just full of letters behind and yeah i I used to cut the threads and then just began doing these knots. So I think this is the, the biggest series I have so far. It was a long ago, so I was living at my parents' place and I have my studio there. And I have time just, I mean, I, I have the whole time just for weaving. So I weave a lot. I used to have a schedule because for me, weaving, it's always been my job. So yeah, it's my passion and I love it, but it, for me, it's my work. So I always have a schedule. So I weave uh, from, I don't know, 10 to one and then four to eight. And yeah, so I have a, a very uh, a schedule, a very program schedule. So I weave a lot when I was younger. Nowadays, I don't weave that much, but I used to do it. So, um, this is the, uh, the work which I participated in the first Dave, the Roman Irenis, and Irenis Davis Award. Um, it was in 2015 when I first applied to this contest. This was uh, the work called Eyes in Tears. So, 
I'm gonna talk about the exhibition later, but at the same time, I was already working with a different technique and with different materials, always using wool so far. And yeah, I began doing this other series about, um, I was using fishing line for the, for the warp and I was still working with wool. I was trying to, to, to do more natural transition from light to dark, but I wasn't getting it yet because the material was very thick, so I wasn't getting it. But yeah, this is another series of uh, tapestries with fishing line, which for me is perfect because now I want to talk about the backgrounds. I always have trouble with the backgrounds. I don't know what to put behind, what to design, which color should I use. And then, I mean, I always dye my own colors. So I don't know, I, I select a blue and then I never dye um, the exact amount of wool that I need. So then I have to dye again and then I don't get the same color. So you can see the difference between one color and the other one. So yeah, using the fishing line for me was my salvation. And actually the main character just gets the whole attention. So I really like working with this material. So yeah, after this, um, well, after applying for, for the contest and being accepted for the exhibition, I flew to Melbourne because I was super excited and my family has been very supportive the whole time. So I went to Melbourne and here I am with the weavers, which they were very nice with me the whole time. So yeah, I went to the exhibition and after the exhibition, they invited me to, to their brunch. So I went to the brunch and that was when I, went, uh, when I met Valerie Kirk. So Valerie, she was the head of textiles at the ANU in Canberra at that time, I believe. And she invited me to apply to the residency, which I did. So I went back to Mexico I applied for the residency, I got accepted. So I flew back to Australia like six months, um, six months after I believe. So yeah, I mean, this residency for me, it's been like the best experience ever in a professional and in a personal way because um, as a weaver, I met different materials and I met different techniques and yeah, it was like a whole world of new experiences and new knowledge and everything. So this is the first tapestry I did. I was still working with the fishing line. I was quite obsessed with it. I was still working with the fishing line and in this first tapestry, I leave a small frame in the part of the heart because it's supposed that this uh, character is weaving herself. So she's weaving herself from the heart. So I left this space, which was very difficult to do the work in this small frame because the frame wasn't uh, stick to anything. So yeah, just passing the, the thread through it and it was just moving and then I need to do it again and everything. So it was uh, a nice experiment. I haven't done it. Um, anymore, but it was very nice. Hopefully one day I will experiment with this again. So this is just details and this is the whole work. This was the first uh, work of this series. It was um, three tapestries for this series I made in the residency. So she's like the main subject because she's the one weaving the stories and weaving everything. So this was another experiment I did, which I didn't like, but I wanted to share the process because I was trying to, I was trying to, um, to use a different technique because uh, the person who was just sitting right next to me at the workshop, she was super nice and super friendly and she was an embroidery artist. So I was very inspired about her work because I really like it, I like it a lot. So I was trying to do embroidery and to stick it to my work, but I didn't like it. I mean, I didn't enjoy the process and I didn't like the result, 
but I wanted to, you, to, to show it to you because you can see the sketch and then how I do a, a bigger sketch and the process and this, uh, yeah, this experiment I tried to do with embroidery, which didn't work for me. And then this is uh, the second work of the, of the series. And I was being very playful here because as you can see on the breast, there is one breast which is like very uh, fluffy. I don't know how to say it, like just uh, the warp is very separated and it just seems like crazy. And then between the breast, you can see the threads just hanging, but you can see the face, it's so detailed and the shadows and everything for me, it's great. I mean, I, I really love this, this work because I really like the details I did on this one. So this was the second one. And oh, about the warp, I took, uh, I took the tapestries out of the frame. So the warp just went crazy. The ones I did before in Mexico, I left them in, in the frame. So the warp didn't, the warp is still the same. And this last tapestry I did at, this, uh, at the residency for me is very, very special because, I mean, as you can see, I, I whipped the whole uh, figure and I invited people uh, I knew at this residency, like people, uh, friends, people which I hang with and I invite them to, to do some embroidery in the tapestry. So it's full of tattoos. For me, it's full of tattoos, full of memories. Like I remember who did each tattoo, who did each embroidery. And there were people who never stitched anything in her life before. So it was very interesting to see how they liked the technique and how they were like super uh, excited about doing something with embroidery, with textile. So yeah, this tapestry is very, very special. You can see the details of the whole tattoos people, people did. And here is the whole result. So I love it. I like it a lot. I know it's my work, but I really like it. And I like the, the, the tattoos and the memories. So after the residency, I went back to Mexico because I couldn't stay in Australia. And I went back to Mexico and I was uh, super excited about this whole new knowledge I have about tapestry and about the materials I can use. And I, I found that in one thread, I can mix several different color threads and just make it one. So the transition from light to dark was, was so natural. And I can be very playful with colors, which I love. So this first work is a, a small series of three of three uh, of three circular weavings, three, three circular tapestries. This was the first one. It was quite big. It was like one meter. So yeah, for me, the details are are very good. So you can see in, like in this melting. Oh, and this series actually is very different from the ones before because it's not about female bodies anymore. It's just about faces, like melting faces. I, I feel they are like mel melting faces. So I was trying to do the, I, I wanted to do this because I can play a lot with these melting things and the lights and the shadows and everything. So I, I really like the details in this work so this this one in particular it uh participated at one of the cater room and i Rennie davis award i believe it was in 2017. and then it's the last one of this series i really like the colors and um, yeah just the mixing colors and the details and everything so yeah you can see the hand like the fingers just falling down and I, I wrote something because this is about a story. So I wrote something. It was the first time I did letters in tapestry. So that's why maybe they look quite weird. 
And well, this is uh, one of the last tapestries I have done so far. It was made in a tapestry. It was made in a, I think it's pedal loom. So it's quite big. This tapestry, the process was different because at, I now do my sketches in my iPad. It's easier for me because I can play with colors a lot. I mean, if I don't like it, I just put another one and then another one. So it's easier for me to change colors and, and yeah, just design it. So this is the sketch and then the process. It was very hard to do it because I didn't place the sketch um, on the back. I didn't place it because it's like a table. So I couldn't place the sketch on the back. So I was just like measuring all the time and trying to draw the lines on the warp. But yeah, it was very hard, but I think at the end it just went okay. As you can see, there are a lot of planets uh, missing. So it was very hard doing it in this way. So uh, now I want to talk a little bit about uh, the things I'm doing now on tapestry. When I went to Australia, I found that tapestry was very well appreciated. And there were a lot of contests about tapestry. So I applied to this one, uh, which really I really like. It was about pins and you can do whatever technique you want. So I made them in tapestry, obviously. So I made these pins and people really like it. So I began wondering how can I do some utilitarian art? And I made these pins and then when I went back to Mexico, uh, with my boyfriend, he's an architect and he has his own studio here in San Luis. So we were talking about designing furniture with tapestry. How can we do a collaboration and that kind of stuff. So at that same time, there was a contest about designing furniture. So we enter and we designed this chair. And I really like the design. I really like the experience and the collaboration. And yeah, it was very nice. I mean, the tapestry is inspired in the sea, in the ocean, in the waves. And, and yeah, this is just me weaving. And these are uh, the kind of things I do in for utilitarian art. I'm doing cushions, uh, rugs, uh, clothes table settings and that kind of stuff, all for uh, home products. So it's very different from my art because they are like very organic shapes or very geometrical shapes. And it's very colorful as well, but it's just different. I mean, they are still pieces of art because uh, no, no one, uh, I mean, every piece is unique. I don't make the same design on another one. So we can still say it's, it's art. These are the rocks I'm working on. So you can see a very organic shapes and then very geometrical, very inspired in architecture. And yeah, I just love it. And these are the cushions you can see as well, like super geometrical and very organic. So this is the things I'm working on. I'm, I'm working on now, and I'm working as well on creating clothes with tapestry. I haven't uh, get to the result that I'm looking for because I want it to be a very special piece that you can use and you can wear and feel comfy, not too heavy. So yeah, I'm still working on that. But yeah. That's all I want to share with you. And I think now I'm ready for some questions. Mariana, that was really so interesting. Um, we, we appreciate your generosity in sharing all those wonderful insights into your practice. And really you've gone through lots of iterations already in your nine years of working. That's just amazing. Now I have some questions that have been received on the Q&A and, and if you do have any others to submit, please keep on submitting them. I will start with a few questions that have come through. Now, first up, 
a couple of people were wondering who was the artist that inspired you in some of those that early first portrait you were talking about the backgrounds and you mentioned an artist then it's egon shell oh yes we would say egon sheila i think or some variant in in, in our language yes you can see the influence in that that was gorgeous and and i love those those ones uh, thank you for thank you for letting us know that um, a couple of questions have come in about the use of the fishing line as your wall. Uh, do you use any knots or anything to hold the wall um, shapes in place? You mentioned when that sometimes you leave it in the frame and sometimes you take it out and the challenges. Are, so perhaps if you could talk about how you keep the wool in place when you use the fishing wire. Um, okay, I hope I understand the question. Uh, first, it's very difficult to weave because you know the weaving is just begin to follow, uh, I mean to go down, so you need to at first to like uh, put it in place every time you weave, but then it just goes natural, like you don't have any trouble to weave anymore, and I didn't have any trouble working with the fishing line i i really like it i think that's the only problem i have at first just to try to follow the the figure but yeah i mean just taking it out of the tapest of the frame it's it nothing happens to the tapestry it just remains the same the warp is the one that just goes crazy and how difficult it is then to be able to hang it or present it as artwork once you've taken it out of the frame mm, it wasn't because i i mean at first it was because i didn't knew what to do and how to make a nice frame but then when i went back to mexico i have an exhibition and i made these frames which are just two pieces of wood so i kind of a stitch the warp into this piece of wood and then here is a warp and then it's another piece of wood with a lot of silicon and yeah so that's the way I hang it now and it works very well. Certainly that piece with the two breasts and the face below that was just amazing the way that that was sitting as you described that as well that was beautiful. Yeah thank you. Uh, we've had a lovely comment that says, uh, where is it gone? On the chat function. Um, loved, what does it say? Sorry. Congratulations, Mariana, you're exceptional. And then the oh, next one, you. isn't that lovely? And the next one was, I love your work in the Melting Faces. What materials did you use? Oh, I use, um, I use cotton for those ones. It's, a, it's very thin, so I mix uh, several, I mean, I mix different colors in just one thread. So yeah, thank you very much. I use cotton. And in the, the, the uh, image that you had with one small face and then multiple small faces, what size were those? Which one? The one, the individual, when you had a picture with a, a number of small faces. Towards the circular the one. With, with multiple faces. How big were they? I don't know which one you're talking about. Oh, it was the one that you had an image where you had one, one face on one side. On the other side of the image, you had about 10 or so faces. Doesn't matter. Doesn't okay. matter. We'll keep, we'll keep on going. <laughs> Um, you talked about your artist in residence experience, and that sounded quite amazing to then collaborate with. They were, I'm assuming, fellow some students at the university. Um, what What else did you find from that residency that took that came into your work from that? A lot. I mean, nowadays, I yeah, I think everything because I was working with different materials before the residency, and then. I was experimenting with so uh, yeah with with cotton and very fine threads, which gave me the opportunity to give more detail to my work, to do this uh, light to dark transition so natural, and yeah, it was very inspired because because 
you can see the whole, um, I mean, a lot of students, students uh, doing different things like dyeing, um, like, yeah, like just embroidery, a lot of textile techniques that I didn't knew before. So yeah, I was, I just wanted to do everything. It was very interesting. And here we have a question from Ricardo. Why do you think in Mexico we don't appreciate art in general? Quite a broad question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, I, I believe nowadays we appreciate art uh, more. You can see the museums, they, they are growing. And I don't know. I mean, I have difficulties with, with tapestry like to find where to, to exhibit or sometimes in the contest, like I can't apply to the contest because of the technique. So I don't know, it's sad, but hopefully we begin to appreciate it more. And change will come. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, now a lovely comment here from Jilly Edwards, who was one of our other weavers in the series. And Jilly says, I really love the way you use the images of the face and body and in a variety of scales from the full drawings to the tiny portraits, a real joy. So that's Thank a lovely you. comment from Jilly. Thank you. There's a question here about offering, do you offer tapestry workshops? And I know, and perhaps you might like to speak a little about, a little about your teaching at, the, at your workshop and what sort of classes you offer and who comes to them? Well, um i do teach i teach tapestry uh at my workshop and i used to teach tapestry at the university of san luis potosí and just around mexico uh but nowadays i only teach at my at my workshop which is, which is in downtown of san luis potosí and i teach like uh, the basic techniques just the basic techniques and then if you want to continue going and to learn different things then i teach you how to weave uh, figures and how to do shadows and how to do lights and nowadays i'm teaching uh, this table loom a small one and the workshops nowadays are like you do on a specific object, sometimes cushions, sometimes, uh, I don't know, tablecloths. So it's focused to learn how to do a certain product. You have such, such a varied practice. It's very, it's very interesting to see your, your rugs and other works as well. Um, do you want to just tell us a little bit more about what you're working on at the moment? Yes. And any I'm, plans for the future? Well, I don't have any plans. I mean, I, I want to, I was doing very big tapestries. So it just took me a lot of time to finish them. And then, yeah, I was just like, I want to do something else. So now I want to weave uh, a small tapestries. So I hopefully have the time to, finish the first one and uh, participate on the contest this year and i'm working on clothes i want to do clothes with tapestry so i'm trying to do a dress with tapestry i'm still working on that because i don't know if these new materials i'm working with are going to to function so you can see the small uh table loom i have on my back so that's what I'm working on for, for the moment. Mariana, earlier you were talking about your schedule when you, I think, in your working at home with your family and you had a lot of time in the workshop. And I think you said from 10 to 1 and 4 till 8. What, do you have a typical day now? I mean, I think you said you were weaving less in, in time. Do, if, do you have a typical day and what does it look like? When, this is when you're not teaching. Okay, yeah, I do have a typical day. I mean, I live by myself now. So I mean, with my partner. So yeah, it's just like you go out of your parents place and now you need to feed yourself and maintain clean. So yeah, I mean, I have this kind of activities. And then uh, sometimes I, I mean, no, sometimes I try to weave all day. I mean, every day. 
but I have a schedule like I think I weave around six hours per day most of the days uh, if I teach uh, it's gonna be less but yeah I try to weave every day uh, another lovely comment from Erica here firstly thank you so much for sharing with us your experience I love your work you're very talented and such an inspiration would you consider offering international workshops through zoom it will be great i think i haven't tried before and i'm i'm kind of nervous about the idea because i i think about it when this uh COVID, uh begin so i will like it i think i really will like it to try it and just to see how it works and i really enjoy teaching so it will be great to have the opportunity to teach to someone who's not in mexico so yes it sounds well, like mean, there's, if, there's if you're good. in mexico it's, it's I, I can teach you as well so yeah every in, in every part of the world it sounds like there's a bit of appetite and the um, tapestry workshop has now had some online classes on zoom which i think have been i gather have been really well received we yeah. have a couple of questions uh about how long does it take to to, to um how long do you spend on a large tapestry and those sort of things uh, do you, you want to just answer anything about the time it takes for any particular size i know it's hard yes i mean yeah it's different um uh, in every yeah it's different in each tapestry because of the details and of the measurements but i mean i'm going to talk about one of the last ones which is the one with the black uh, background, which is like a female body and some planets on it. Uh, it took me around four months, I believe. It's very, it's, well, I mean, it's kind of the biggest one I have done so far. And it's like one meter and two meters along something like that so yeah that took me like four months but there's another one the big circular one the first one which is the biggest i have um, in a circular way and it's one meter along and it took me around three months because of the material it was very thin and very detailed so yeah a couple of other lovely comments love your work Fearless, congratulations. And from Valerie Kirk, who, who um, you've had spent time with. Great talk, you're an inspiration. Hope you come back to Australia one day. And another one that says, love your work, it's fabulous. So, you know, there's such a lot of interest in what you're, what you're doing out there. Uh, we, we might wrap up shortly, but uh, do you want to offer some thoughts on, you know, travel when it's possible? Can you repeat again the question? Do you want to just see if, if you might be interested in coming out to Australia when it's possible again? I, I'm always interested in coming back to Australia. I love Australia. I, I really enjoy my time there. I have so many beautiful and nice experiences there. And Valerie, she was, I mean, she made me feel like family, you know? And she was super supportive and yeah, I mean, if you invite me, I'm, I'm happily going. And Marianne and I were talking, talking <laughs> earlier just before we started, and I said, well, how wonderful would it be for some of us to go to Mexico when we are able to travel? And I think she's, uh, Mariana, Mariana is very up to coordinating some things in Mexico as well. Yes, yes, I can, I can plan the whole trip and where to go, where to stay, where to eat, yeah. I will be delightful. I'm sure we look forward to that. Now, I think we probably finished all the questions and thank you for everyone out there that's been answering questions. Uh, I think that's all we pretty much, we have everything covered off. So it's my, my great pleasure now to thank you, Mariana, very much from everyone around the world. And we do have quite a mix of participants on the call today. Thank you from everyone who's joined us today. And thank you, Mariana, for your wonderful talk. You can see by the comments that have come in that uh, you've been very inspirational in your work and in the way that you go about your work. It's just been wonderful. And to everyone out there, please visit the ATW website to learn more about the 2021 Kate Derham Award and the RN Davies Emerging Award 
Artist Award for Small Tapestries. As I mentioned earlier, the entries for the awards are now open and will close on the August the 9th. So Mariana, thank you again. Thank you everyone out there thank who's you. been watching and goodbye from us. <clears throat> goodbye, thank you everyone.